Good morning. Welcome to worship at Redeemer uh, Living Waters Lutheran Church. Uh, please join with us as we sing and rise, as we, if you can. What is it called? In spirit and in in spirit or in, in body or in spirit? Yes. Uh, as we sing, my Redeemer lives. Christ with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace. Peace. You please be seated. So we have a, a couple of announcements this morning before we continue with our, our worship. Uh, if you have an announcement, please make your way forward. I noticed that Joel did so during the piece, which is a very pro move. I have to say, Joel, that was good. That was good. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> Joel's also my last announcement, so sit tight, Joel. Okay. Uh, Becky's been on vacation. If you've seen her on Facebook, it looks like an awesome trip. So the additions to the community art piece will happen. But um, if you have more to add, the basket is still out there as you leave on the left side. Gretchen, you have an announcement this morning? Sure. <laughs> Sorry, a little tired this morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, just getting ready still for the kickoff Sunday on the 27th, I think is the date. 25th. What is it? 25th. 25th. Two close. weeks from today. That's close. I don't even know what today is, so... Um, we need more prizes to give away and stuff like that. That's our main thing right now. I think we're getting lots of food and, and um, drinks in and stuff like that. Um, so more like the prizes and, and stuff like that. Little, just little giveaways, to, cheap giveaways to give away um, would be great. Um, but, and if anybody else has any ideas, let me know. But 
that's what I'm looking for now. So. And, and the big addition? All the big announcements is we have a fire, a fire truck. <laughs> I hope not. An ice cream <laughs> truck coming this year. So that's really exciting. Yeah, ice cream. <laughs> Let's go. And, and we do have the dunk tank. I've got all that settled and the, and the um, bouncy house and everything. And so we're all good on that. So. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, Gretchen. Looking forward to it. Two weeks from today. Very good. Erin, you have an announcement this morning? Good morning. I um, have the announcement about birthday packs. So we are helping out taking part in the D47 uh, back to school event, which is a little different from our normal school drives. They're doing um, uh, immunizations and dentist checks, um, shoes, things like that. So we are um, committing the birthday packs. I checked our bin back there and everything looks really good so far. We've got lots of cake mixes and candles and frostings. So, um, you know, we could still use more of those, but if you're trying to decide what you might want to bring next Sunday, will be the last Sunday for it. We could use maybe some little gift cards, uh, like just maybe $10 from Walmart or Target for a small birthday gift or other things that might make birthday's fun, so I saw somebody had brought balloons, um, anything like that that would make a birthday special for a child in D47. So Very good. Yep, next Sunday, please bring it all so that uh, it can be there for the event. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Very excited about that. I, I will say for what it's worth, both at Mariano's and Jewel yesterday, birthday stuff was on sale. Just put it, like, put it that way. All right. Um, next Sunday, we will have our first Barney Waters of the new uh, school year. Uh, youth group will be at 4 to 5.30 over at St. Barnabas. We'll be having New Orleans night, so kind of a follow-up on the youth gathering, and those who weren't able to come to the youth gathering can uh, join us for that. So I believe beignets are, are going to be in order, uh, and, and games as well. So that's next week, 4 to 5.30. The community Bible study continues. We, we had our first session last week. This will be number two of three. We did hold to the promise. It was 32 minutes. Close enough. God's grace is sufficient, right? Anyway, um, it would have been 30. I, anyway, but yes, uh, I got into a story and you, what happens, happens, you know? Anyway, but yes, we did, we did hold to the promise. So around 11.15, we'll meet in room two, uh, which is on the right side down the hallway. You do not need to have any biblical experience at all. We will um, read the passages together and, and talk about how they relate to community. So... Um, Please join us today, and then we'll have the last one next week. Now, Joel, your time has come to come forward for the, the announcement. As we know, we are doing this month of, we are in the John chapter 6, the bread of life narrative, and so we've decided here at Living Waters, let us feed the hungry as a response. Joel? Uh, today is the second Sunday of the month, which means it's our collection um, Sunday, so if you have stuff, um, there's a trunk out there outside the door, uh, like a a, a car trunk that you can put the stuff into. Um, and uh, if you are often like me and like, oh, no, I completely forgot. Um, if you come by, uh, I'll, I'll, come, I'll leave a bin outside the door of the church, so, and I'll come by tomorrow night. Um, so if you can swing by maybe after work tomorrow and drop off some food um, in that bin outside of the church, it'll be at the back door, um, not the front door here, but the back door at, uh, at the end. Um, I'll come by and check that bin and, and include that in um, the groceries that will take over to the Crystal Lake Food Pantry. Um, so, end of that announcement into the next announcement, right? That's very, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, next week, um, as well as the, the last Sunday to bring uh, birthday um, activity and, and, and food supplies. Um, there is a, we're doing a, something called an offering of letters. And that is, um, I will, we will be signing uh, letters or possibly even writing if you want to write your own. But we will be supplying um, uh, messages to our state or to our uh, congressional, our federal representatives uh, and in Congress um, with the House representatives and the senators. Um, and we, um, I know it's kind of a, politics is kind of something that you really don't talk about at church, but this is something that um, speaks to, to our spiritual journey and it's, um, it's hunger relief. And we're encouraging them, no matter what party they are, who they are, um, to just encourage um, legislation that um, promotes hunger relief 
and um, anti-poverty legislation. So um, there's the Farm Bill, uh, which gets passed every five years. Um, it was last passed as a, an actual five-year Farm Bill in 2018, um, and it was up for renewal last year. <clears throat> but you may remember there was a, a government shutdown, and um, they had bigger fish to fry, essentially. So they said, you know what, let's worry about this next year. Um, so they, it was, the deadline was in November 2023 for the Farm Bill. They kicked it back to September 30th, 2024. So right now um, is a time for, um, for us to write these letters to encourage our senators um, and our House of Representatives um, to, um, you know, to consider and to, to work towards, um, you know, the, including in the Farm Bill, um, um, programs that help people that, that need food. Um, so the, the Women and Children program and the SNAP program um, goes a long way in, in helping with that. So, and also, um, it also, there's international food relief as well that's involved, so um, it's just a, a big thing. But the reason I'm mentioning it is the fact that um, it'll be next week, but um, as you also may have known, um, the districts for Illinois have been thrown into a blender, essentially. Um, I don't know if there's anybody who still has the same representative they had, um, but they, it's been redistricted. Um, I was just commenting to the pastor that um, the congressperson Schakowsky's, um, I believe it's district 11, no, district nine starts just next to Randall Road out here and extends to the lake. So it's like they're really strange and um, you know, however you may think of it, but they've been redrawn and I would encourage you to, there'll be something sent out this week, um, a, a, a link that is a, it's a, a website where you can check and see, you can enter your address and see who your representative is. Um, and we'll also have that information, we'll have that capability next week, but I just didn't know if you wanted to get a, um, a head start on knowing who your representative is if you don't know. Um, and um, I know people like this area, here is Bill Foster, um, Congressperson uh, Jan Schakowsky, she starts like I said, on, uh, near Randall Road and going that way. Actually, um, Golf Course Road. Um, so all that to say, look for the email link for next week. We'll be doing an offering of letters, and um, I encourage you to help us in this regard um, to send a whole bunch of letters um, to our representatives, and um, hopefully that will have an impact. Um, we'll also bless the letters and pray over the letters to... to um, that they'll, they'll do some good work. So, um, and that will probably be in, in the ensuing week. So, but we'll have a table next week. Uh, out, just look for me out there on the table um, and we'll have uh, a way for you to sign your name to these letters. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. And this legislation usually passes with bipartisan support. You may say, well, if my congressperson's gonna support it, do I need to write a letter? Writing letters is always good. They always wanna hear back from their constituents. And as people of faith, we wanna advocate for what we believe. And feeding people, as you hear this month, is one of those things that we want to advocate for. So thank you, Joel, for organizing that. Uh, we are doing, as part of this month, a, a drive for ELCA World Hunger. So far, we have raised $256, which is great. Uh, we heard last week all the tangible things that it can do to help create sustainable food systems and healthy foods around the world. Uh, we do have the capabilities to end hunger in the next generation, and this is part of that work. Um, if you do want to give, there are QR codes in the back and also in the... Um, Hallway. You can also, if you're writing, if you want to write a check, just put in the memo that it's for the ELCA World Hunger. If you're not sure how much to give, uh, $50 can, can make a difference, but even as much as, as 5, 10, 20, every little bit helps, um, whether it's gardening tools or sustainable water projects or seeds even. Uh, it's all, all, while it's affordable, it's, it's very much needed around the world. Um, if you're like me and you want to do something biblically nerdy with it, Bread is mentioned 81 times in the New Testament, so $81, right? Um, if you're really feeling generous, bread's mentioned 280 times in the Old Testament <laughs> for a total of 361 total times, so just wanted to pass that along. Uh, and speaking of bread, our last announcement, we are doing a different type of communion bread this month. This week is a, a French wheat loaf from the farmer's market. So if you cannot eat wheat bread, please let me know and I will give you a wafer, okay? But it'll be a small amount. So if you're like me and wheat, mm, it'll be, I think you'll be okay with a little piece. But if you do need that, please let me know when you come and take communion. Okay? 
All right. Are there any other announcements this morning? All right, well, please rise and body your spirit as we continue worship with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin together. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life of the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there's always more than enough. And through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life.
Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food we may live as his body in the world, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, y'all. So our first reading this morning is going to be from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 4 through 8. You can find this reading on page 284 in the Bible under your chair. Elijah went on a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones in a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. Our second reading comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 25 through chapter 5, verse 2, which you can find on page 951. So, then putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Word of God, word of life. Please rise and body your spirit for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of the Lord according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. You may find this reading on page 868. And if you left the bookmark, you're already there. And guess what? We'll be there two more weeks. So go ahead and uh, leave that bookmark. Uh, John 6, 35, just to kind of reset and remember what we heard last week. And then continuing with 41 through 51. Jesus said to the crowd... I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jewish authorities began to complain about him, because he said, I am the bread of life, came came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has ever seen the Father, except the one who is from God has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat eat of it and not die. I am the living bread came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated, and I invite the children up for the kids' message this morning. Good morning. All right. Let me... 
So today's bread, as we, here I'll grab my stool, as we go through this month, we're hearing that Jesus is the bread of life, and we're feeding all these hungry people, we're having a different communion bread each week, and so this bread, so this week, you heard Joel announce that we're focusing on local food pantries, the, the food donations we get today are going to feed people right here in the county we live in, in McHenry County, so have you ever been to a farmer's market before? Maybe like Crystal Lake, Woodstock, no, okay, so a farmer's market's like, all local vendors that uh, make goods and foods, uh, garden pr- products, that kind of thing. And one of them makes bread. So I got this bread from the farmer's market because we're talking this week about meeting a local need. And so why not have some local bread for our communion today? And last week we talked so much about feeding people around the world. Well, there's a great need here too. There are hungry people uh, who go to school with you. There are hungry people who... Um, Live, could live right next door or down the street. There are hungry people that are all around, and we want to make sure that we're meeting the needs of, of people here as well. Will you pray with me this morning? And I invite the congregation to repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God we, thank you we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, your son, Jesus Christ. who is the bread of life. Bread of life. Please, help Please help us to feed the hungry, feed the right, here in our community. right here in our community. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you for coming up this morning. Have a good week. I hear all the time that there's so much that's happening in the world today that is, that is negative. When one reads or, or watches the news, it's full of war, division, hatred, futility, and discrimination. And I think it's weighing on all of us. I hear you when it comes up in our Bible studies. I hear you when it comes up in our, our conversations during fellowship and, and in our prayers. As someone I often know says, I wish I could be a fairy godmother. You know, like, like Cinderella, right? Okay. I wish I could be a fairy godmother and make all the problems in people's lives go poof. No more problems. I think we can all feel this way sometimes, especially when we walk alongside people that we care about who are going through a really difficult time. I'll be honest, I often wish I could be Pastor Fairy Godmother. I wish I could simply go bibbity bobbity boo and all the prayers come true immediately. But I've talked so much the last two weeks. We've heard enough about and from me. I want to hear from you. Let's say you are a fairy godparent, as in you do have the power to make anything become a reality. And think for a moment what you would want to happen to the people of this world if you had that power. Actually, you know, wait, 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 that's too easy. Uh, we, we don't do easy here at Living Waters, right? Because everyone's going to say peace and erasing poverty and loving one another and I hope after this month ending world hunger, but it's too general. It's too easy. Let's do something a little more challenging. Let's make the scale a little smaller, something we know a little more intimately for better or for worse. Let's talk about our local community right here in McHenry County. Oh, yes. The interactive sermon is back. So what I need you to do is to get in groups of five. Five. Now, uh, I know we just had a multi-week sermon series on community, so I know that you're going to get in groups of people you might not know as well as we're building community together, okay? And if you have more mobility, please go to the people who have less mobility. Go. Go. Okay, all right. I knew if I said five, we would get like eight, so this is a victory. Okay, because I see a lot of sixes and sevens, so that's a win. Okay, all right, so this is what you're going to do together. 
Okay? Nita, can you hit the next slide, please? Thank you. You're going to answer this question. What do we want for the people of McHenry County? Assuming you can make literally anything happen, you have the, the power of fairy godparents. Boy, isn't a millennial not seeing fairy odd parents? Fairly odd parents is really difficult. Anyway, um, so uh, be as specific as you can. I'm going to give you four minutes because I have promises to keep about Bible study afterward being at 11.15, only lasting a half hour, of course. And when you're done discussing specifically as possible, please send a person or persons to get sticky notes, markers which I tested and do not bleed through, and then attach them to this e easel, okay? So you're answering, what do we want for the people of McHenry County? Coming up with as specific as possible answers and putting them on the board. So for example, saying love, while that's great, not very specific, all right? Specific things we want, okay? The timer begins now. Good luck. Please share the markers, because there's only six. And for those of you at home, if you want to play along, just go ahead and comment in the live stream, and we'll add that to the board. Okay, start making your way forward with some post-it notes. Start wrapping up those conversations. One minute warning. Mm -hmm. 
housing, physical safety, coverage. More reasons. If your group has not come up yet, now is the time. Very good. And we're going to leave this up after worship if you want to come up and, and see, because I'm not going to read all of these out loud, but I do see a lot of um, communal issues, homelessness, gun violence, domestic violence, care for the elderly, health care, lower taxes. Well, you have the power. You can get rid of taxes altogether. Come on. Uh, let's see. More employment opportunity, education, safety. Very good. Very good. These are great. Y'all did great. You are great fairy godparents. Wow. That's wonderful. And thank you for, for playing along as always. This is a great list. It is. And like I said, I'm going to leave this up so you can come and read it after worship. I'll probably move it over here though when we have communion. Um, now, here's, here's the, the, uh, the interesting part of this. While none of us, to my knowledge, to my knowledge our magical fairy godparents, what if I told you we still do have the power to make these things that you listed a reality right here in McHenry County? As helpless as it can feel watching the news, knowing there's only so little that we can tangibly do for positive change in these situations that are often far away and very complicated, we can, however, change the community to which we've been called to serve. For us, that's right here in McHenry County. Instead of despairing of what we cannot do, make a difference where you are, however you've been called. That's what I see here this morning are things that God has put on your heart that you've been called towards. And I believe it because I've seen it, this ministry that we carry out here, the partnerships that we are building in the community, the donations we give, the education, the outreach, the service that we provide in all the ways that we share the, the, God, the grace of Jesus Christ, they are making a difference right here. Sure, it's a little slower than poof, but positive change in people's lives is still happening. And if that isn't enough, as people of faith, Jesus promises us in Scripture repeatedly, we have the power to change things for the better. Next slide, please. Including today when Jesus says, the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. These are not just some empty symbolic musings in the Gospel of John. Rather, they are part of a tangible promise of God in Jesus Christ. Promises made known in the Word. The Word that was made flesh in, in Jesus Christ. The flesh of Jesus Christ that was crucified and yet was risen again in accordance to the promises of Scripture. That same fully present Christ in our communion bread and cup each week that feeds us for what we need for the week. The things that we need for the week to be able to do the work of changing things for the better. Where we are in the weeks ahead. Through the, flood, through the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, God has given life to the whole world, including McHenry County. You don't need a fairy godparent. We have an almighty Savior. Through God, all things are possible, Scripture tells us. Even that which we feel currently helpless to change. 
When I look at the list that we have made of of the things we want for the people of this community where we live, I don't see an insurmountable goal. I see the potential, the potential of the fulfilled promise of Jesus Christ leading us forward. I see a God who has done and is still doing the work of positive change through people like us, through communities like these. I have hope that these things will come to pass because then them I see these words, the bread of life that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Now, this is where it gets really cool. Science is going to tell us where to start this morning. Slide number four, please. Behold, Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Here what he has done is he's given us everything that human beings need to be happy and healthy uh, with the things at the bottom being the first things we need and the things at the top being the last that we need. Uh, So how this works is if you want to get to a point where you feel like you belong and love, hey, that was in the community sermon, but that isn't the first step after all. We need things like food, water, shelter, and warmth. So now when I'm looking at what we have done, We have a lot of things that are up here, which is, again, important needs that need to be met. There were some that were down here, I saw, safety and other needs, but these need to come first. Food, water, shelter, warmth. Before these needs are met, it will be very challenging to meet the ones that are up above. Which makes sense when we hear Jesus say in Matthew 25, which I know is not our gospel for today, but it's too perfect not to include, when I was... Hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was naked, you gave me clothing. And when I was sick, you took care of me. And wait, it gets better. Notice how Jesus identifies this whole entire month. I am, yes, in Greek, I am is capitalized, invoking the idea of Yahweh. I am the bread of life. God is meeting one of our most important needs through Jesus Christ. Which, wait a minute, there's, there's more I am statements in the Gospel of John. I wonder what they could be. Hmm. Well, we know, okay. I am the bread of life. Let's see, I hope we know this one. I am living water. I am the, the door to uh, God's kingdom, uh, shelter. Level two, I am the, the light of the world. And I am the sheep gate. This is the security that uh, protects you from harm. Level three, Jesus says, we know we just have this community, we're talking about belonging, and we heard that Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Belonging. And God is not done there. Level four, having self-esteem, believing in yourself, recognizing that you're capable because God loves you and has claimed you as God's own forever in the waters of baptism. Jesus tells us this when he says, I am the resurrection and the life. And you know God is of course, going to finish this off, where we grow as people, where we hone our gifts, where we find purpose and callings and in life. Jesus, our Savior, promises, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are part of this, and God will show us how to live abundantly according to the gospel of John. The unique way that God has called you to where you are is how we make a tangible difference. Even though Abraham Maslow and his hierarchy of needs didn't exist for until the 20th century, God has always known exactly what we need. And Jesus gives us what we need in order to change the world for the better. Indeed, the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. You want to change the world? Start where you are. Start at the bottom of the hierarchy of needs. By feeding the hungry, the rest will follow. Slide five, please. Or next slide, please. Thank you. According to the Northern Illinois Food Bank, the top set of figures... Wow, it's much smaller than I thought it was going to be. That's okay. The top uh, set of figures is the 2009 Illinois Food Bank um, annual report. 6.7% of people here in McHenry County are food insecure. And perhaps you can see, by 2022, the most recent numbers that we have, this number has grown to 9.2% in just three years. And you can also see the majority of the people who are in need are are caught in the middle because most of them do not qualify for SNAP, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. 
that we'll be talking about next week with our letters, actually. Uh, so they cannot get that assistance. So they fall in between the cracks, so to speak. This is where the food pantries are especially needed because they can feed these folks who do not qualify. You will also notice the amount of uh, money need, needed to uh, meet these food needs has more than doubled in the three years since 2019. Our donations to local food pantries are helping meet this need, the specific need, this specific tangible, positive change that Jesus has called us to. This is the work of the gospel. This is the work of Jesus, the bread of life. Right here, right now, we are called in our lives as a community to help those where we live, where we are called to serve. These are the dreams that God has given us for our vision of ministry, how to make the world a better place. Start by feeding the hungry and the rest will follow. God is showing us a way. God gives us what we need. God has provided, and God has given us a way to make all of these dreams tangible in a life-abundant reality. Amen. rise in body or spirit. And join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. For him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, was over death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come and done to judge, judge the living and the dead. And the kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and Son is worshiped and glorified, which spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Wisdom has built her house. May the church be a house of wisdom for all who enter. May we continue to grow and stretch in ways we never thought possible. Merciful God, wisdom has mixed her wine. May the harvest season be plentiful this year. We pray for orchards, vineyards, farms, and all of creation. Protect and conserve the earth. Merciful God, wisdom has employed her laborers. Be with all who seek adequate employment. Guide our economic and governmental leaders to support the people of our world with fair wages and safe working conditions. Merciful God, wisdom has invited her guests. Make your presence known to all who feel lost, abandoned, or hurting at this time. Direct your spirit to care, of care to all who seek healing and comfort. Help us fulfill these calls that you have given us that we lift up today. This time we lift up prayers aloud uh, and silence our hearts at home in the comment section. Merciful God, wisdom has set her table. May this congregation be a welcoming table to all who seek the refuge of God. Break down walls and barriers that prevent us from offering a seat at this table to anyone who comes. Merciful God, wisdom has shown her path of insight. May we journey on her paths, looking towards a bright future while remembering from where we have come. We give our thanks for those who have gone before us. Merciful God, we lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Please be seated.
crucified and laid behind the stone. You live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to a feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and on the cross opened his arms to all. The night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together in whichever language you prefer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come, all are welcome.
that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father to you are. You're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. It's love so undeniable I can hardly speak Peace so unexplainable I can hardly think As you call me deeper still As you call me deeper still As you call me Please stand, or please rise in body or spirit. <coughs> Sorry if you're watching, Mom. I'm talking a mouthful. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be na- with you now and forever.
from the garden. It looks like a lot of tomatoes, which is wonderful. Um, there are snacks. looks like blueberry pie and Oreos. You can, if you're coming to the community Bible study, you can bring your veggies and snacks with you. That works too. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ.